The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 449. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a actress and a martial artist, and I'm really excited to have her on to share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Samantha Joe. Samantha, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm an actress, martial artist, former stunt woman, and yeah, I'm just living life to the fullest and enjoying everything I've been doing. I, I feel extremely lucky. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Samantha, what's your cultural background? My cultural background is my father is Chinese and my mother is French Canadian. So I grew up in kind of a multicultural household and it's it's pretty neat. I've gotten to experience kind of the best of both worlds and I, I feel really, really fortunate to have been able to have grown up with, you know, getting to have the Chinese luxuries of going up for dim sum with all my relatives and going to lion dances and uh, I practiced wushu growing up and I felt very in touch with my Chinese side. Other than the fact that I don't speak the language, which I did try, <laughs> but I grew up in Barry at the same time, so it wasn't exactly a popular language over there. But uh, yep, so that's my dad's side of the family, my mom's side of the family, French-Canadian. Most of us lived around uh, the Ontario, Canada area, so I just had a, a huge loving family, and both sides of the family really got along with each other too. So it wasn't uncommon for there to be my Chinese relatives and my Caucasian relatives all at Christmas dinner, and they all know each other. And it just felt like a very warm, multicultural, interesting family dinner all the time. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Samantha, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence, oh, there are so many out there, and I'm sure you've probably gotten this one before, but it's by Lao Tzu, and it is... Because one believes in oneself, one doesn't try to convince others. Because one is content with oneself, one doesn't need others' approval. Because one accepts oneself, the whole world accepts him or her. Awesome. And I, I love that quote. It is a great quote. I mean, especially, you know, growing up as women, especially like Asian women, we're so prone to what other people think of us, right? Sometimes we just have to let that notion go and just go out there and do what it is that we want to do, whether it's become an actress, martial artist, uh, you know, travel the world, you know, you just got to go out there and live life. So thanks for sharing that great quote. And, and in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? Uh, it's so tricky. I mean, you'd want to be so eloquent with this because it is so important. But I, I did think long and hard because I, I received the question ahead of time. And I think for me, it would be the ability to love and know yourself and what you stand for. And the way I see it is if you can do that, it will never matter what another person thinks of you or how they judge your actions and opinions. And I do have a little story to go along with it because uh, I don't know. It, for me, that is what makes sense. But in case other listeners don't quite understand, I know there have been many times in my life, and I'm sure all of ours, where a friend or a family member has warned that if we do or say something, other people might think we mean this or that. Uh, and a small example of that would be, oh my God, I know I've lived this one. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have too. But if you choose to end a sentence with a period, the fear is that the recipient might think that you're being short with them just because you're ending a sentence in a period. But if you live by that phrase, I think if I truly love and know myself, I know that I never set out to hurt anyone or make passive aggressive gestures. And I make a conscious effort every day to carry myself in a manner that makes people around me feel safe and loved. So in the instance of choosing to end my sentence with a period, I can kind of rest easy in knowing that it's just a period. And if somebody does take issue with it, they've distorted it into something it's not because of their own experiences and fears separate from myself. And I know that I'm not perfect, but I know that I always mean well, and that's all I can do. And I'm good with that. So if I choose to use a period, 
that's fine. And that doesn't mean I'm being short with anyone or a bad person, even if other people might perceive that. Thanks for that great definition and story that you mentioned. You know, I didn't even know that if you end a sentence with a period that people might get offended, <laughs> to be honest. But it's it's amazing what, you know, these little gestures can, you know, affect a person. And like you mentioned, right, if you, you know, do things knowingly that, you know, you're trying to help someone out or you're doing it out of, you know, good faith, then it's not going to be such a big deal. And, you know, some people, you know, they might have their own problems and, you know, they might take it the wrong way because it might be something that is reflective of them, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's out of your control. You you don't know what that person has lived. And as long as you're coming from a good place, I feel like you can't really do wrong. Even if you miss the mark and you don't end up helping, you you tried in a way that made sense to you and how you would have appreciated it. And and that's really all we can do. Nobody can enter the psyche of another person and fully understand everything that they need. But I feel like as long as we're making an effort every day, then that's that's all we can do. And <laughs> we shouldn't beat ourselves ourselves up if, if we are unable to help a person. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So I really love that definition that you mentioned. And Samantha, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Oh, man. So I, I told you about the ending a sentence with a period, I, instead of just living my life, you know, making a daily effort to make a positive impact on people, I felt like I almost lived with a fear of having a negative impact on people. Things like ending a sentence with a period, or if you just type the letter K, I know some people get all worried about like, oh, they just typed K, that must mean they're mad at me, or things like that. Like I would go through all these possibilities of, in my head of how people could perceive what I'm saying or doing and take offense to it. I, I was just so worried about hurting people's feelings or making them feel bad. And I know it's because uh, we've all had instances in our own lives where we felt bad or somebody has said something to hurt our feelings. And I was just a really sensitive kid. And so it always had a, a deep impact on me. And I knew that I didn't want to do that to other people, but I took it a little too far. <laughs> And I just got scared to do things because I didn't want to hurt people. So before I really was able to accept myself and know that, you know, I know and love myself. And so therefore, uh, what other people think, it doesn't matter so much. As long as I'm happy with my decisions, I can sleep easy at night. But it, it was like a sort of fear. I do remember one instance I was working and, you know, I work in film, so there are lots of different departments and how you communicate with different departments. Uh, you know, it matters to make a harmonious environment where everybody can get along and understand each other. So there was just this one miscommunication that I kept having with another department. And I, I wasn't meaning to come off in any way. I, I always, like I said, try to live life to, you know, make a positive impact on people. But there was just this strange miscommunication that happened. And I got an email from one of my superiors as a very light warning, like, oh, hey, just be careful of, you know, when you talk to these people, just be careful of this. It was such a light, not even a warning. It was just such a, a nothing instance. But because I respected that person so much, I took it so hard. I was like crying in my hotel room and I just felt ashamed of myself. And I didn't know what I could have done differently. And I beat myself up over it. And now I realize you know, how silly that can be, because all I can do is, is to try my best. And if, if it misses the mark, or if it gets lost in translation, it's not my fault. And now I'm able to forgive myself or, you know, laugh at it and go, Oh, that was weird. I don't know why that happened. Uh, and not make such a big deal of it. But I can't say that I'm completely cured of it. Because if I do respect someone a lot, I, I still do really become affected by, you know, their the words that they choose around me or their opinions, because I want to, I see that what that person stands for and their morals. And, you know, I live to, I don't know, I, I do like to make certain people proud, I guess. So I, I don't think I'll ever be completely cured of it, because there are certain people that I want to live up to their standard. I, I do want to, but I also need to accept when I'm unable to or when I can't. And so it's just finding a balance, I think, of the two. I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to become your best self or have the best impact on people around you or make people proud, but you can't do it 
at the sacrifice of your own happiness. Thanks for sharing that. And I think as women, um, we're really great at, you know, taking something really little and making a really like big, or we, we go crazy about it. Like, it's like, what did I do wrong? How can I, you know, why would I do that? And then we shame ourselves to the point, like thinking it was the biggest mistake we made in our life. It is, you know, sometimes it happens, right? And sometimes we just got to learn, like, you know, it's, it's not that big of a deal. We can live through it. We can learn from it and we can keep moving forward. And you know, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you're just more than enough to go out there and be the person that you are today, you know, do the things that you love, be more confident? What was like that aha moment? I think it was when I started to work full time in film, and I got to do what I loved on a daily basis and really grow my craft. I just started to as I studied and grew my craft, I felt that my self confidence was really growing. And the more I worked, and the more I fell in love with what I did, the more i I knew and loved myself more. And it wasn't really like an overnight change or a specific incident, but it gradually happened probably from age, from like age 18 to 20, I'd say. And it, it just puts your mind at ease, I guess. It's every decision that you make doesn't seem like the end of the world anymore. And it, it life is just easier and happier that way. And, um, I don't know. And everybody, I'm sure, needs to do something different to find that place. But if we can all get to a place where we can just love and accept ourselves, I think the world would be such a happier place. You don't put the pressure on other people anymore. You don't have these ridiculous expectations of people or yourself. Uh, it, it's a really great place. But I, I do find that for myself, doing what I love really let me grow that confidence. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And yeah, it's a totally different feeling when you can do something that you truly, truly love, right? It's like nothing can stop you. And even if obstacles come in our way, it's we can get through them, right? We can get back up and just keep going and going because, you know, that love, you know, because you love it so much, you just, you, it's like, it's not as a big problem as you think it would be. Exactly. And it's it's interesting because when I was doing what I loved, I felt like myself because it's like that's what my soul needed to fulfill itself. So, And I'm lucky that I get to do it as a career and I get to make my living from it. But even for those who don't make their living from their passion, I just find that doing it, whether it's you know after you get home from work, reading because you just love reading and you love these stories or writing or painting or you know, just community basketball after you get home from work. I just find that doing those little things that make your soul feel happier also grows your confidence. And you just, you feel more like yourself. And the more you can get used to being in that state of mind, the feeling like yourself, the more you just learn to love and embrace everything about yourself and your life. And so I really encourage people to, you know, at least once a day for however long, just do one thing that you love to do. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, because of this realization, what's your life been like now? I know I can't complain. I, I really do love life and I love my family and I love what I do. I feel really fortunate that I've been able to get to this place. But I just, above all, I feel glad that I can accept myself. And I know that I always have good intentions. And I do genuinely, from the pit of my heart, want to make the world a better place for everybody and want to make people smile and make their day brighter. And because I know that that is like my life's mission, my life's goal, however, I might fumble along the way, it's okay. And I can forgive myself for that because I, I always come from a good place, I believe. So I, I sleep very well. I sleep a good eight hours a night, <laughs> like a rock. And I'm very happy. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think it shows that you are doing what you love and making an impact at the same time. I mean, I know you were recently just in um, the Wonder Woman movie, right? And just, you know, having an Asian representation for big movies like that is, you know, an inspiration on its own, just showing others what's possible. You know, so many little girls out there can see like, if she can do it, I can do it. And, you know, just taking that leap of faith can make a big difference. So Thank you. That was the best. That was, really was the best part of working on the film, by the way, just for those who haven't seen it, because it, it just is such an inspiring experience. And I, I just want every young person, every kid out there to be able to, you know, have that feeling or that feeling of inspiration and of self-confidence and empowerment and 
everything that film represents, I really, truly wish that for everybody. Awesome. And I think it's already making those kinds of changes in the world. So it's great that you were able to be a part of something amazing. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? I would say truly get to know yourself and what you love and what you want for yourself and embrace it. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think, you know, doing what you love is something that is, you know, the greatest tip to give. I know it's simple, but it's not always easy, but it's rewarding, <laughs> totally rewarding for sure. So, so thanks for sharing that. And, you know, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Oh, yeah, I do have Twitter, which is at Sam W. Joe. And I have a Facebook profile page, an official official Facebook profile page called Official Samantha Joe. So, uh, yeah, you can connect with me there. I'm posting hopefully inspirational things. And I just want to make as many people smile as I can. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Samantha, you can also head on over to thetowselfconfidence.com and search for Samantha's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really want to thank Samantha for taking the time to share her story with us, especially, you know, the tips and and wonderful advice she gave on self-confidence. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. It was an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Sign up for our free membership site to get more amazing resources for self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.